Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. Faith on Friday Presents is about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you are here, please subscribe, like, and share this interview. We're always going to have so much fun. Today is no exception. So it's the new year. Everyone's looking for a new job, and everybody's working on their resume. But does anybody really know how that thing works? Of course they do. And that is my guest today. Her name is Heather Rothfire Wanish, and she's going to tell us all about our resumes. Hi, Heather. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for being with us today and helping us with this weird question about resumes. Yes, I love writing resumes and I love talking about them. So perfect. All right. So first of all, how long have you been reading, writing and working on resumes? Oh, goodness. So I started in 2008. Um, so about 14 years ago, it'll be coming up on 15 here shortly. Um, and I've been writing them since that time, helping people, um, talking with them and trying to show them what they need to do to make sure that they're able to land a job interview. That's good. That is a great segue to the next question. What is your resume for? That's exactly what it's for. So people will say, oh, I'm going to write a resume so I can get a job. And that's like, well, yes, ultimately. But the resume is really to get an interview so that you can sell yourself in order to get the job. So you have to think about it in that way. And I think that really helps people understand how to write it better because hiring managers are getting hundreds of resumes and they need to be able to quickly scan through them and figure out who they want to call in or come in for an interview. Yeah, that is so good. Cause I think, like you said, a lot of people think that I'm going to write an interview to get a job, not mm -hmm. realizing your interview. I mean, your resume is literally to get you an interview. Exactly. So you mentioned that, you know, hiring managers look at hundreds, especially depending on the job, hundreds right. of resumes. What is something that somebody can do to differentiate themselves in that stack of resumes that someone's looking at? So I always tell people and what I do when I write resumes for my clients is like front load the document. So that means putting the good information first. Um, you don't want to bury the lead, so to speak. Um, don't put all the good things at the end. Make sure that you are putting all of the key experiences, your skills, your strengths, and all of those things at the top of the document. Because really, when people are scanning through those resumes, I mean, think about it, that's where you start is the top of the page. So don't bury the lead and make sure that you're putting really the key information first enough so that they will want to scan the rest of the page. Yeah, that's good. Because, you know, a 100 years ago in another life, that's what I had to do. I had to read resumes. And I would go through and just disqualify stuff right away. What is mm -hmm. some of the things that you've seen that will disqualify a resume right off the bat? Well, oh, I've, I feel like I've seen it all. Um, so things like misspellings at the top, um, you know, having different sections, but all kind of just I don't, there's not a fancy way to say it, I'm just like chunked together. Um, so not being sorted correctly. Um, another thing that I often see is people will go into Google Docs or Microsoft Word or whatever, and they just pick like the first template because it looks easy and they can just dump in their information. But the problem is, is like, everybody's resume looks exactly the same because you're all using the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so those types of things really are a key component. I had a client once that the person meant to say, this is a really good example. It's I mean, it's funny, but it's not, but it is. Um, so they had customer service skills, like as a skill listed, which mm -hmm. great, you know, right. but they actually misspelled it, but word doesn't always flag things, especially if they're words. And so that person's skill said customer services kills. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I, yeah. <laughs> so things like that. I mean, if you can't pay attention to those small details, like right. that's a way to get disqualified right away. That's true. That is so funny. And yeah, I've, I've read some things that, yeah, it's a real word, but it's not that word. 
yeah, it shouldn't be that word. So then, so Heather, when you're looking at them, you know, are there different styles of resumes that someone should be thinking of considering when they're writing a resume? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on your industry. Like if somebody's in education, if they're in a medical field, a lot of times they'll be asked for a CV, which is just a different form of a resume. It tends to be longer, um, more sections, publications, presentations, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I mean, honestly, like co the components of the document kind of stay the same. Um, you know, you have a summary at the top, you have a skills or strength section, you go into the professional history, and then usually we put education on the bottom if somebody does have career experience. Right. Um, so really, I mean, I guess the biggest tip I can tell people is like, pay attention to the job posting. If they're saying in your resume, you must document this, this, and this, then mm -hmm. that's what you need to put in there. Um, right. In some ways, like think about the job posting as the first part of your job interview. If you can't follow those instructions, they're not going to call you. Wow. It sounds so simple, but if you're sending out, and I love this, you're sending out six resumes, you're sending out 10 resumes. Mm -hmm. Can't they all just be the same? Well, kind of, but no. Um, so that's a really um, great answer. So they can sort of be the same as long as you're like, if you're a nurse and you're applying for uh, just a variety of nursing positions, great. You probably don't have to change very much each time you're sending it out. Um, mm -hmm. But like, for example, I worked with somebody in the past that uh, he he just had a very eclectic background. And so we did have to change it. Like each time he was sending it out, like, no, we need to put this section first and move this one to mm. the bottom. Yeah. Um, so the part that I tell people to change is the summary at the top and then that skill section. To a certain extent, like what you've done in your professional history is what you've done. There's only so many ways to say it, um, but you can change those skills and strengths in the summary, um, especially when you're talking about adjectives and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my so advice. Interesting. That, and that is great advice. So what about this? Because I've seen these two, colored paper, scented paper, and fonts on a mm -hmm. resume. Yeah, I've seen it all. Um, I had somebody, a client once, send me her old resume and it had um, like kind of like clip art on it and it had a unicorn and a rainbow. <laughs> oh gosh, was, yeah, what was she was applying like, for? I don't think this is, no, she wasn't applying to the unicorn factory. So I don't think that that's really where, where you want to go. Yeah. Um, so I mean, the scented paper and the colored paper, that's honestly kind of a thing of the past because mm -hmm. most of the time you're just uploading a file. Um, yeah. I know I always say like on paper, but in reality, it's usually in a file. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, you do need to pay attention to fonts. Don't use something bizarre that not everybody has, like stick to a standard sort of format. Mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes, especially when people are, you know, graphic designers and just different things like that, they want right. they want to make it all fancy, which I get, but it's like, you can't be fancy at first. You need mm -hmm. to get through online systems. And then you can bring your fancy one to the job interview with you. Yeah. And and that's so good because like you said, it's that resume is to get you the interview. Then you go in and sell yourself because right. you can't get it all in on a piece of paper, right? No, no. What about getting it all in on six pieces of paper? Because, you know, some resumes need to basically be the size of the book War and Peace. So what about that? <laughs> yeah, I I mean, unless you are in like higher education and you do have, you know, publications and a bunch of things you have to list, really your resume shouldn't be over two pages in length. It really shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, again, like this is how I tell my clients, here's the difference. So you go on Google and you Google something. How often do you go to the sixth or seventh page and say, oh, there it is. That's what I want. No, you are looking at right. the first page and that's it. So it's, mm -hmm. your resume is the same thing. They will maybe look at the second page, but if you're sending a six or eight page document, I, I can just about guarantee you they are not looking at that whole thing. Wow. I know I wouldn't want to look at that whole thing. No. I mean, that's an, it's insane. And so, you know, you're, you're talking about, you know, your clients, is it better to get help with your resume or is it more like nobody knows me like me? I can do it myself. 
So that's a really good question because a lot of times people will say, well, it's my resume. I can write it because I know all of it. Well, of course, you know all of it because it's you. Um, but I'll tell you a little secret uh -huh. is that I had to update my resume a couple of years ago. And like, I don't like writing my resume either. I like writing everybody else's because mm -hmm. it's not me. And so what happens is, is because it's your information, you really become like too close to it and too mm -hmm. emotionally tied to it. And it's very, very difficult to say like, oh, I'm not going to include that or I don't think this is important because you're going to think all of it is important sure. because it is to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I think personally, it's easier to have somebody else do it just because it's not my stuff. And so mm -hmm. I'm able to say, let's get rid of this. Let's do that. Let's add this. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and I, I understand that people think it's easy to write a resume, mm -hmm. but when they sit down to do it, I think a lot of times it's like very overwhelming for people. Yeah, it can be, especially if you, you know, I live in a military town and we have a lot of guys and gals getting out of the service after 15, 20, 30 years, and they're going to sit down and do a resume. Talk to me about jargon in a resume. Yeah, so I have had the privilege to work with some veterans coming out of the service, and their resumes are written for the armed forces. There are so many acronyms and jargon words that the average person isn't going to understand. So mm -hmm. even if you're in like a legal field, a medical field, there's so many different acronyms that if you're looking to go into the private sector or mm -hmm. move on to a different industry, you can't use those because nobody knows what they mean. Only the insiders know what they mean. Right, right. So it's really, I guess I would say as much as possible, eliminate the acronyms and the jargon. Mm -hmm. um, either that or list it once and then kind of explain it in parentheses so people can say, oh, okay, now I get it. This person did X, Y, Z. Right. And I mean, that is so good because, you know, again, like I said, in my former life when I would read resumes and I'm looking at them, I'm like, what does this mean? And right. believe it or not, though, sometimes, especially if I didn't have tons and tons for a specific position, I would call them in just because I want to know what this word means. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting the job, but come and explain this to me. You know, you mentioned about having somebody else do it for you. Now, there right. are resume writing services everywhere. You yep. can get a resume written for 20 bucks or 2,500 bucks. Yep. How do you go about finding somebody to write a resume for you? Well, obviously they should call me. But well, that's the only <laughs> place you should go, I mean, actually. <laughs> obviously. But no. So, yeah, I do tell people, um, you know, because I do have people come to me and then they decide to write it on their own. And I will just I'll say, you know, here's some tips if you are looking to get some help online or something like that. So the one thing. A couple of things I would look for. If you decide you want to do a Google search to find a resume writer, try to find a service that offers you actual conversation with somebody, not just email. That would be tip number one, because a lot of things get lost in translation in email. And I think it's very difficult to work that way. The other thing is I would check like their Google reviews um, or check some sort of reviews because mm -hmm. There are literally job sites where you can, you're right, you can get a resume for $5. Yeah. Um, I also know people that charge five to $8,000. Wow. So yeah, I don't, but yes, I do know wow. people. But the thing <laughs> is, is like, that's two completely different markets. So you need mm -hmm. to find something that works for you. Mm -hmm. um, but be very, very cautious because there's a lot of sites out there that we just, in the in the industry yeah. um, we just call them cookie cutter resumes like it's basically mm -hmm. the same resume for everybody right. um, so just be careful but I would definitely want a conversation with a person mm -hmm. um, and then check reviews check ratings and things like that yeah. because you want a reputable source if this is helping you get a job like you know, vet the process, you know, vet right. the person you're going to be working with. Yeah, that is that is so smart. You know, but that brings up this other question. So we talked about, you know, the five thousand, eight thousand dollar resumes. A lot of times those are for your exec team that is looking for a CEO position, doing whatever. I get that. What about the kids that are coming out of high school, going for their first job, their whole experience, everything they've ever done has been in school or volunteer. Yep. How does that look on a resume and how do you beef that up, if you will, to get your first paying job? 
Right. It's kind of, it's, I always equate it to like the chicken and the egg. Like, how am I supposed to get the three years of experience that you're requiring if nobody will give me a job to get the experience? So right. it's, I get it. Um, I always tell people like on your resume, especially like for high school kids, mm -hmm. if you call a section experience, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to say paid work experience. Like if you were mm -hmm. in a club or an organization and you did fundraising or you were the top salesperson of the fruit you sold or whatever it right. was, you know, that's experience. It doesn't necessarily have to be listed under voluntary or volunteerism mm -hmm. or voluntary experience. Um, but I would definitely do that. You can mm -hmm. list like classes you've taken that you think would apply to the types of jobs that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You could even, you know, some, and again, it depends what it is, but you can always list like your GPA. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. But I had an author go. Um, so you can do that. You can also, you know, if you earned academic letters with your sports or things like that, you can do mm -hmm. that. So there's a lot sure. of different ways to add things. You just have to be yeah. creative. And I have a lot of like <clears throat> formatting tips too that I can mm -hmm. use, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, you're using up that whole page of information. Yeah. That is, that is so good. So Heather, because you're the only resume writer in the world and somebody wants to work with you, <laughs> how would they get in touch with you? <laughs> Yes. Well, um, so right now they can go to my website. So the name of my business is Feather Communications because growing up, everybody called me Heather Feather. Um, so my website is feather-communications.com. Um, I do offer free resume reviews. So if somebody is just like, hey, I don't know if this is good or not, you know, they can send it to me. I can give feedback. Um, that's one way on um, my email and phone and all of that are on my website also. Perfect. Okay. You guys look, she is giving you lots of tips and lots of really good information. And did you hear that part? She does free resume reviews. If you didn't get her information, don't panic. It's all going to be down in the description and below. And don't forget also subscribe, like, and share this channel. We want to get the information out. Heather, my friend, before I let you go... We have to play our game. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things. And you, my friend, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. You ready All to right. play? I'm ready. All right. McDonald's or Burger King? Burger King. Mm. Batman or Captain America? Captain America. Freaking Marvel people, I swear. Going to the movies or movies at home? Movies at home. Uh, I hear you. Make the call or send the text? Send the text. <laughs> really? So you're like all about the business. Let's go. I ain't got time to talk to you. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Snickers or Three Musketeers? Ooh, a Snickers. Yeah, me too. Dressing up or dressing down? Dressing down. Ah, cats or dogs? Ooh, dogs. Okay. Thanksgiving or New Year's Eve? Thanksgiving. Yeah, me too. Fry it or grill it? Grill it. If really? I don't have to, if I don't have to grill. Like, uh, that's I don't what I'm talking about. I'm grilling. <laughs> right. Okay. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. Mm, that's surprising. I don't know. And and I'll tell you why it's surprising because I know where you're at. Tell everybody where you live, Heather. I live in Northwestern Wisconsin. So um, near the biggest town closest to me, it has about a th not even a thousand people. <laughs> so that's why I'm a little surprised that you're a night owl. I thought for sure you'd literally be up with the chickens, but oh well. Yeah, I do have chickens, but um, yeah, I get up fairly early. <laughs> Of course I have chickens. Of course you have chickens. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> of course I do. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I get more things done like later in the day. So yeah, that's interesting. And finally, what is your favorite Olympic sport? Diving. Ah, I like diving. That is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Heather, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate your time and your expertise, which is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I've enjoyed it.
Yay. And for all of you, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, if you or someone you know is it has an inspiring story or has a topic we have to talk about or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com. Select contact and send me an email. I really want to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Faith on Friday Presents. Thank you.